On a scale from uh, 0 to 10, I give this job a solid, a solid 2. Better than changing the toilet, but... Uh, This video starts on the day after the last video ends when we left the boat with massive problems to uh, put our through holes in, uh, no insurance that we can launch the boat before the end of April and, uh, and bad weather, uh, which, is, which is bad for us because we need to have good weather to apply our new anti-falling. So things are not going great, but hey, the spirits are up. <laughs> The spirits up today, Ryan? They're better than yesterday. It's been years since I can remember like that I was that frustrated. It happens when you try to change oh. through holes. <laughs> through holes will do that to you. <laughs> so when a boat project goes awry, a lot of times when something goes wrong, it's because uh, you find out about something else that needs to be fixed while you are taking care of the project. Barney, it's okay. Oh yes, daddy's coming back, I promise you. So what we realized yesterday is really that we are lacking the proper tools to do the work and we're not quite sure what those tools would be. Uh, and also we actually need to be a few more people to, uh, to carry out that project successfully. Thank God for Jane and Mark who came and gave us a couple of extra pairs of hands. Uh, we're back to square one and we're probably going to have to buy new skin fittings and redo everything that we have done. <sighs> but you know what, eh? today the sun is shining, uh, we're going to the boatyard, it's going to be, it's going to be nice. It's not going to be what we expected, but we're going to make it work. No good day at the yard starts without a trip to Home Depot and West Marine. Okay Ryan, what are we looking for here? It is uh, 10 a.m. on a Sunday. Uh, we haven't even made it to the boat yet and we've already spent about 200 bucks. <sighs> Life's great. What happened and where are we at? Yesterday we were putting in the skin fitting. This is this piece that goes through the hull. Part of it's cut off because we had to cut it off to get it out. This is all going inside. So this is the seacock. It closes and opens to stop water coming in and out and then this goes up to a barb which you can't see because it broke off which connects to a pipe that goes into the boat we had two problems the first is we put the skin fitting on and we really had a hard time getting the tools in there to tighten it up um, but the second problem was once we got that on we tried to spin the seacock and the, the barb on and there just wasn't enough room in the boat to get those on tight so we kind of have them half on now, and the issue is now we can't even get them off. So they're like stuck. <laughs> so we have to undo what we've done. Yeah. And I we had... I'm gonna try to do it without taking out the skin fitting, but if we have to take out the skin fitting, it means we need to cut the, the brand new one off, which sucks. So I'm just gonna take a look at it right now and see what, if anything, we can do in here. I was so frustrated yesterday that maybe, maybe there are some things we can do it is really hard to know what to do or how to deal with the problem when you've never done it before. Uh, and so yesterday was a big moment of uh, learning by doing. The one thing that is frustrating is that uh, a lot of the systems of the boat were installed before uh, the walls and the rooms uh, and the cabinets of the boat were installed. So I am pretty sure that the seacocks and the through holes were installed before the cabinets that surround them and that makes it extremely hard to replace them. Failing through hulls are the reason why, a big reason why boats sink. So it really isn't something that can be messed around with. It's something that makes us nervous. Uh, and so it has to be perfect. There is no alternative. It has to be perfect. We have to be able to trust our through hulls. Oh, but Barney. Hi, Barnaco. We just are in a place I can't get it all out. So I could get a Dremel tool out and just Dremel off this barb and then I could spin the rest of it out and then we could just go get that new piece. That we can leave the skin fitting in, that'll be Because the skin fitting is good. It's on tight, yeah. Okay, great. So in order to do that though, I have to reconnect all the batteries because we only have a Dremel tool and 220 volts, unless Chad has one. 
Ryan needs a hemorrhoid cream for the pain in the butt that uh, this through hole situation created. Yeah. If any of you have some, uh, please send it to uh, Harrington North at uh, Police Hill. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, so in the meantime, Ryan met our friend Chad. I am going to West Marine to pick up those new parts. I mean, thank God there is a West Marine like literally two minutes away from the boat. This is our aisle. All right, so this is brass. We need bronze. Okay. I think I found it. It's okay. like this, this thing. Uh, yep. Okay, so we're getting that. And then, and then the pipe uh, that looks like this. Yeah, oh yeah. Yep, is that three quarter? Well, that's what it says. Yeah, then that's it. There was another 50 bucks. <sighs> what a great day. Ah, beautiful weather. Oh yeah. So did it work? Yeah. Oh wow, we love something that goes to plan. So what happened? Well, we finally got this out. This was all one piece, one big elbow. And the problem with that is that when you go to turn it, this piece hits the wall. Instead of having one piece that's all like this, where it's hitting the wall, we essentially remove the piece that's hitting the wall, tie this in, and then once this is all in place, we can go and screw this barb in. That's how we fix the issue. I got the piece in, now I just need to get the barb in, and that one will be done. <laughs> cool. Sometimes you just gotta walk away, and I need to remember that. So I think that the day is uh, slowly starting to be saved because the sun is shining, uh, we have managed to fix our through hole problems. So we're gonna start by uh, applying some uh, primer uh, on our hull in the places where it needs it. So there are some patches that came off. It's really not too bad, especially considered that we've been sailing full time for two years, crossing the Atlantic two times since we applied the anti-fouling. So we just need to uh, start by applying, applying a little bit of primer in the spots that need it with the help of my assistant it's Barnacle. Captain Barnacle. Barnacle is going to show us how to not get barnacles. Okay, so we currently have three different colors of paint on uh, the hull. The first one is uh, pink, that's our primer. The second one is yellow, that is the tie coat. And the third one is the black, that is the actual anti-fouling. So everywhere that we can see some uh, pink, we're gonna need to reapply some pink, and then we're gonna need to apply some yellow, and then we're gonna go with the anti-fouling. And that needs to happen sequentially uh, with uh, respect for the curing times and temperature, so today's a nice day, it's a great day to do that, and then moisture. So yesterday we could not apply the anti-fouling because it was raining. It's a good day to do those things. Right, Barnacle? Shall we get PPE? Let's get that sailing fashion going, you guys. Oh yeah, you know it too. This is contractor grade. I feel hot. It's because you got 15 layers on. So we have the primer and the cursing agent that we need to mix. So to make sure that I miss no spot, I'm gonna work from uh, stern to bow. Okay. So let's do this, you guys. So according to Hempel, it's okay to go a little bit over the black too. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna go a little bit over the black. When I bought a boat to go sail the world, this is exactly how I picture my life would be. We are now applying the tie coat. The tie coat is the yellow paint that you see, and I am going to apply it on top of the pink spot that I just painted. Shake it like a Polaroid picture. Uh, what a beautiful shade of yellow. I remember that this coat, the yellow coat, was the one that was the, the thickest and the most, not hard to apply, but definitely, like that's, a, that's some thick paint. Are you a boat artist? Oh my God, I am, yes, absolutely. This is me painting the hull. 
is worth more than the boat itself. When we first painted the hull of our boat with this silicone, we put this entire coat of uh, primer and then the tie coat and then the anti fouling And you know, this time we only have to do those small dabs of uh, the primer, just, you know, where it needs. And it goes so much faster. Oh my God, it's great. <laughs> I'm so over this. And it's not, and we're not even like, this is not even the whole thing, like, that would, that would not be me. I sniffed no paint tubes. Okay, out here on day two of the paint job. Uh, looks like it's raining. It did just rain. I think that was the end of it for the day. So it's a little bit later in the afternoon. But what we have to do before we get going with the big paint job is take the shrink wrap off and then put some tape around the borders to make it look nice because we want it to look nice. So that's gonna take a while. And in the meantime, I think the rest of this rain will get out of here. It will dry off. The temperature is actually supposed to go up. So it should be good. Let's see. So if you think she's the only one that can PPE, I was the one that taught her the dance skills. Oh, wrong way. Cool. So you may be looking at this hull and be like, yeah, that's just paint, what's the big deal? But actually this particular paint that we apply on our hull is a big deal because it is not your traditional anti-fouling. It is silicone-based anti-fouling. Traditional anti-fouling paints, whether that is soft anti-fouling, hard anti-fouling, or copper coat, work by releasing one or more biocides via the surface of the paint essentially killing anything that attaches to the hull of the boat. Depending on where in the world you sail, you will have access to more or less extremely toxic anti-fouling. Because, uh, yeah, you guys, uh, anti-fouling is not good for you, and nor is it for the marine environment. On top of that, your hull still needs to be cleaned if you end up spending a lot of time on anchor or at the dock, because without drag on the hull, barnacles will still attach. No, not that barnacle, those. <laughs> So a couple of years ago, Ryan and I decided to go over to a silicone-based anti-fouling, and it has changed both our lives and our environmental footprint. These special paints work by creating a slick coat on the hull where barnacles simply cannot attach. It contains no biocides and is so much less toxic than, well, uh, paint that is designed to actually be toxic. I kind of feel like a beauty influencer when I talk about it, but I just can't say enough good things about this paint. Instead of having to spend hours each week scraping our hull, we now just take a cloth and wipe the slime that forms on the hull, and that takes 10 minutes. The only downside to it is that, well, uh, it's technically not available yet in the United States, but we may have heard that it could change somewhat soon, so yeah, uh, you didn't hear that from us. In the meantime, it is time to maintain our anti-falling and bring it back to its original glory, so it can last us for another few years. Good morning and welcome to Harrington Arbor. Today we are applying the second coat of uh, silicone on Polisil. First coat looks great, very happy with the result. We're gonna apply the second coat and then we're gonna be ready to launch. Uh, pray for us that we can do it <laughs> before the end of April. You're gonna m mess up your hat. On a scale from uh, 0 to 10, I give this job a solid a solid 2. Better than changing the toilet, but uh, it's gross. Looking good, Ryan. But she looks good. This was just the paint. I need to wax the hull. We are gonna do a electrical refit kind of, a refit light, refit medium on the boat. I wanna do that when the boat's in the water so I can get things on and off and work a little easier. So I'm gonna connect all the batteries so once we get it in the water, we can move it to where it's gonna go for the next month, hopefully if we get in the water quick enough. So I gotta show you a few things. These are actually the Dakotas. These are 135s, they're also a starter battery. So we're gonna use one up here this is a lead acid starter, this one. Uh, it's 95 amp hours and it's bigger than these guys, the 135s. 
Woods. I have never gone through a winterization or a summerization as we did in Curacao without having the bow thruster batteries go bad. And I do not understand why it is. I just took the voltmeter to this and I was getting like two volts. So they're pretty cooked. But lithium holds a charge for a long time. So the Dakotas that we had in our house bank charged those up before we left about 13, two, 13, three, maybe uh, volts. Let's see where they're at. 13, two. So yeah, they held it all winter. So yeah, I'm just gonna connect these, get some power on the boat, uh, and then we'll get it moved and take all this out, clean it up because it needs it and uh, make it spiffy and diffy. Yeah. There we go. We now connect this end. It's important to make sure all the Jubilee clips are on. I can't get this out. That's fucking amazing. All right. So we need two more clips. Last one in the process of Taking out the old one, I'm sure it will show up eventually. You should always use two of these Jubilee clips below the waterline. I only have this much turn and this is off a little bit. And it's a really thick hose. I remember the last time I did it, it was a pain in the booty. Come on, come on. So closer. Good morning. This is a new exciting day at the boatyard. Today we are doing our final preps before we are officially ready to splash. Except we don't really know when we're going to be able to splash yet because we messed up. Today, I'm going to be taking care of my favorite job on the boat, namely waxing the hull. Uh, and uh, by favorite, I hope that you count the sarcasm. Anyways, we're here. You know where the day starts. Let the party begin. So we are done at the boat for today. The boat is painted and waxed. We are ready to go in the water. This is the moment of truth where we go to a Harrington Harbour North office and very nicely ask the ladies if uh, we can splash, if we can uh, be on the standby list take some one spot and uh, go earlier than in four weeks. Uh, we have a splash time for April 24th or something like that. Uh, we're ready to go, well, we'll be ready at, in an yeah, hour. Yeah, we messed up big time. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't know that here you're supposed to kind of book your lunch a long time in advance. We didn't know that, so. Yay! You want to go on standby as well? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, if we could, yeah. What is your name? Uh, Paul Lucille. My name is Ryan Ellison. What's your level of hope, Ryan? There was a long list there. Really? Yeah. Oh, God. But she said they touch, she said they touch 90 boats a week. Okay. So there was like 10 that I saw on there. Oops. Oops. <laughs> Particle. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so it is officially the end of yard work for this time around. Uh, Polar Seal is ready to go. We have uh, secured everything on board so that uh, she would, you know, be able to go in the water safely. Uh, unfortunately, the way that the standby list works is that uh, they're only gonna call you when the boat is in the water. So it's a little bit nerve wracking. We're not gonna be there to uh, check on the seacock as soon as the boat hits the water. Uh, when they launch her but that's that's how it is hopefully in our next video the boat is in the water uh, we have no idea um, pray for us <laughs> cool. 
That's it. That's it. Thank you.